Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, Introduction to Corticon Rules for Open Edge, What It Is and Why It Rules. My name is AJ Crete. I'm a Partner Marketing Manager here at Progress. Now on to our uh, guest speakers uh, for today's webinar. Uh, you'll first be hearing from Colleen Smith. Colleen Smith is a Vice President of Product Marketing at Progress Software. In this role, she is responsible for the go-to market planning, strategy, and product marketing for Progress's Open Edge Business Unit, in addition to SaaS Cloud Industry Thought Leadership. Colleen joined the company in 2005 with 20 years of enterprise software marketing, sales, and product strategy experience, and has helped transform software companies into industry leaders, build strategic partnerships, design acquisition strategies, and move companies through aggressive growth stages. Uh, after Colleen, we'll be hearing from Kevin Foster, who is a Senior Product Marketing Manager at Progress Software. He is responsible for the go-to market planning, product marketing, and strategy for Progress's Corticon business unit. Kevin joined Progress in 2013 after 15 years of technology marketing and management experience with various hardware and software vendors. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand things over for Colleen. To Colleen, we'll get uh, today started. Thank you, AJ, and hello, everyone. Uh, I'm very excited today to talk about Open Edge rules or rules for Open Edge, what it is, and uh, and why it rules. I, I do like that. Um, this is actually part one of a three-part webinar series. So just to make sure, because I want to make sure that people don't feel they're not getting everything out of today's webinar, there was just too much content to put into a single one. So if you haven't uh, registered for the other two, I would uh, strongly recommend you do that. As we already said today, we're going to just really be doing an introduction to uh, what we mean and what we're talking about with Open Edge rules or Corticon rules for Open Edge. And, um, you know, we really want to make sure that you all understand the value and, and the reason why uh, we do, we're doing what we're doing. Now, the part two, I think, is also going to be a good one, especially for our Open Edge customers. What we're going to do is have Peter Judge, many of you might know Peter, one of our key architects here in the Open Edge uh, world, and Mark Stone, and they're really going to be talking about uh, the ABL versus Open Edge rules. When would you code an ABL versus when you might use a rules engine? And I think this is a lot of the questions we've been getting from many of our customers and partners is trying to decide, well, when would you do one versus the other? And that's what we'll really focus on. And the entire uh, focus of that webinar will be that discussion of this versus that. The third one I'm also excited about, because we do actually have a number of customers, especially uh, Open Edge partners and customers around the world, that have already started to embrace the rules engine, the Corticon rules engine. So part three will be specifically a demo by Chris Hogan and Carol Miller, two of our key uh, technical solution consultants, and they'll actually be showing you what have people done and how have people really embraced the rules engine in a modernization strategy for their open edge based applications and uh, and so this is the, the total of the, the three part series and um, hopefully you'll all uh, enjoy each one of them and really get something out of all of them and I also would uh, say that if there's other people on your teams that you think should participate in part two or part three absolutely have them register for that and then, as AJ mentioned, we will be recording all of these, so if you are unable to attend, make sure you listen to the on-demand portion. So with that, let's, uh, let's get into just the, the first, uh, what I wanted to do is just do a definition, and I always like to start with a definition to make sure that everybody is on the same page, so to speak. Um, you know, what is rules management? Uh, obviously, from a market perspective, perspective, people call it business rules management. We talk about rules engines. We talk about uh, different capabilities. But really, what are business rules? And, and the best definition I could find for what business rules are is these are statements that express specific policies 
and uh, they affect the uh, the execution of making decisions because based upon how these rules are implemented, different decisions or outcomes may occur, and that's really the key thing. And as we talk about business applications that all of you have developed, what's really important is depending upon the type of application you've developed, obviously within that, you have hard-coded, many of you or some of you have even built your own rules engines to handle those if-then-else decision-making statements. And so what's the value of a rules management or a rules engine? Obviously, we want to make sure that the applications you develop help the business or the users to make more informed decisions or to make sure that the rules are consistent with either regulatory requirements, if you're uh, dealing with a type of application, let's say like a payroll or an accounting application, where there's very specific uh, rules and regulations that come down based upon how those decisions or criteria need to be built into the application. Or it might just be that rules are changing constantly. Maybe you've built an application that has to do around pricing, product pricing or product configuration or promotion, or even something around billing where depending upon maybe a certain location or where the user is in, the, in a certain geography, there might be different rules that need to be applied. And that's often difficult to code into your business application because typically you're going to hard code that and then package and ship the application if you're an ISV or deliver that and deploy that application to the users if you're a, an enterprise. And so what you don't have the ability to do is change constantly or change per user or change per location very easily when it's hard-coded into the business application. And that's really where the situation where typically an organization is going to look at something like rules management or a rules engine is because you want to make sure not only that you have the agility to make changes very quickly uh, within your application, but you need to make sure that they're accurate, especially in the area of risk management or fraud or if it has to do with health care or has to do with any type of regulated business uh, environment. And you want to make sure that you have the control over what those rules are and how they've been implemented. And so really that's what all the buzz is about. And I think maybe 20 years ago you could hard code things in your business application because there weren't as many changes. And one of the things that's changed over the last 20 years is the rate of change. And these days, with regulatory requirements and just business rules and trying to keep up with your competitors, many times you don't have the ability to make those changes in your core application. And so what you're really looking for is a separate rules engine that can manage and maintain. And as opposed to during, let's say, um, compile time making those decisions, it's more of a runtime perspective. And that's really what we want to focus on and talk about today is, you know, how do you make better dis business decisions or you, you, how do you allow your users to make better business decisions with your application? So what I'd like to do now is turn it over to Kevin to talk a little bit about you know, how these decisions are impacting your business, your applications, and more importantly, your users. Kevin? Hey, thank you, Colleen. So, yes, what we're going to start off is thinking about your application. It doesn't matter what it is, what industry you're actually developing it for. It's all based upon decisions. The application is going to make a decision. However, each of those decisions have rules that are governed. And we just have a few examples here. So let's say I happen to have an insurance app. The easy decision is, should we pay this claim? But just one of the many rules is, well, if it has an invalid billing code, I have to reject it. Then you can think of all the others that are associated with that. If I have a marketing, promotional type of a marketing application, do I offer it in promotional incentive? Well, it depends. Is this person a frequent customer? And if so, they may get a 10% or 20%. Or who knows? Maybe, as Colleen was talking about the flexibility, it's coming up to be it's holiday time. You want to do an additional um, percentage. Think about how difficult it would be to normally go back and recode those just for something like a seasonal change from marketing. The last two we've all seen before. 
loans. If I know that the person has a low credit score, they're definitely going to be denied. But all of these are the rules that are necessary to help you determine a decision. And it's key to remember that no matter what the decision is, there usually it's not just one rule. There are a lot of rules that they see implica are implicated with that. So, so how do we do it today? Most of you guys have found the ease and use of using ABL and 4GL to just simply code it. And for the most part, it works really well. However, we do know that with some of these rules, they may be a little difficult to code, simply from the fact that there are so many different interdependencies. And as it was really sophisticated, guess what? It sometimes almost seems to be impossible. The other key thing that Colleen mentioned a few minutes ago is with some certain industries, such as regulatory, being regulatory finance, or heavily regulated like finance, healthcare, those things can change on a very frequent basis. And sometimes, because of all those interdependencies, one simple change results in hundreds of lines of code. And with that being the case, we've realized we have to think of what are the alternatives that exist. And on the arrows on the around there, those are just some of the things that can implicate your your application, why you may need to change. Colleen mentioned fraud. Competitive, for example, you see it a lot in the airline industry, all the fare wars that are going on. If I need to go back and put in a discount, I want to make it very easy for me to make that happen. So that's why we are looking at alternatives and why we're going to talk about the business rules. So let's talk about progress open edge rules. You know, there are four, it really had, first of all, it helps you make your decision faster decisions and help drive your application. Four key components here. One is the use of PDS, which is for rules. You guys, are, especially if you're an open edge customer, you've been using PDS for a while, you know how easy it is. The key core component is the Corticon Business Rules server that sits there and does all the intelligent processing for you. We also have the Enterprise Data Connector. This actually leverages some of the data direct components of our company that allow you to get that information wherever it may be held, whatever repository may be there. And then last but not least, and Colleen's going to talk about this a little bit later, we've done some things to make sure that there's an open-edge adapter to make this as seamless as possible for you. So this is what makes constitutes open-edge rules. This is a somewhat busy slide, but let's just basically make it real simple. On the left-hand side, it says that whether or not you are a developer or an analyst, you have the ability to interact with Corticon. And within that, you have the ability, and from Corticon, not only can I access the enterprise data sources that I need, I can also actually go to other applications, work with BPM. We have some, some, a lot of connection points within that. The key elements you need to understand is, and we'll talk about this more, you have to have, be able to model your rules with integrity. We have some cases where people, before they even utilize Corticon, in the insurance industry, they were using things such as decision tables that were on paper. And therefore, some guess what that means. Depending on the mood of the person who was reading the table, you, you didn't have any consistency within the rules that were being promoted to whoever the end user was. This, by utilizing it and standardizing it and automating it in something such as Corticon, it allows you to get that consistency across the entire thing. Now, Colleen mentioned some of these. This is just a, another way of saying that the key element of utilizing a rules engine, it helps you to define, manage, and maintain those rules a lot easier, especially with the more complex rules than having to go through and code it. So one of the key elements we mentioned already, you're able to adapt to change. Here in the United States, we see it so much within our healthcare system. When government regulations come down, we actually have a user, um, the state of Pennsylvania, that is a Corticon user. They'll tell you that sometimes because of the political system, laws get passed or put in place 24 hours or 48 hours before they have to actually be implemented and, and executed. So those guys, they don't have the time to go through and try to code, test, and recompile in such a short period of time because their constituents or their, or their citizens they need to be able to access that immediately. So utilizing a rules engine is one of the ways that they've come up with of how to actually be able, be able to better serve. Another good one, and I'm not going to go through all of these, is how it reduces the total cost of ownership. I have a slide a little bit later with that, 
But because we're utilizing a rules engine, it takes a lot of the things we were talking about earlier with rules and having to find the interdependencies and go through to the testing. A lot of those things kind of get cut out, allowing you from a developer perspective to do the fun stuff, which is to innovate, not simply go back and actually find um, update cut rules. Kevin, one of the uh, interesting things here you talk about is uh, also separating the rules from the code and providing that intuitive user interface. And I think, you know, later on we'll show that interface, but I think this also brings into the fact that it doesn't just have to be the programmer or developer that might potentially actually be participating in the development of the rules themselves. We're not saying that, you know, the guy who's making the decisions on the healthcare regulations is going to be coding, but they absolutely can now be more involved because of that intuitiveness of a user interface as opposed to hard coding. That is exactly right. And that's one of the benefits that we found is that a lot of the places that have implemented or deployed they have basically figured out ways to actually bring in those power business analysts and users to utilize it more. And if I think we go to the very next slide, this is the reason why. Look how easy it is, guys. It looks very much like an Excel spreadsheet. And so, therefore, because – and this is, we've actually patented this from our own perspective, from a progress perspective, to ensure that there is no hard coding, no hard coding is actually necessary. You can do a lot of drag and drop. You can import your vocabulary. Those are just some of the easy things there. The one key thing that those in our developed community that they do love is we've put in a lot of built-in testing into Corticon, and that helps you figure out certain things. Do we have incomplete rules? Do we have circular logic in the rules? And, I mean, we have this one uh, great example that we'll probably, probably even Chris Hogan will talk about um, down the road in, in the third webinar. But he's actually, you go through, you do some simple coding or whatever else, and you click on it. And while you think that you actually have gotten all the different um, missing use cases, Corticon has the ability to go through and say, no, you've missed quite a bit. And it's one example we use. It's over like 20 million that they've actually missed. And not only did Corticon find those inconsistencies, you know, incomplete circular logic, they actually corrected it for you to make it a much more e much easier in terms of the process of getting it out. So intelligence gets built into the Corticon engine itself so that it's assisting you to make sure that you don't miss some criteria. If Colleen is over a certain age, under another age, non-smoker and going for insurance policy, it might say, yeah, but what about the scenario where this equals that or this doesn't equal that? Exactly. We've had so many places where um, for those who are in the, more in the developer community, you know what it's like. You go through, you get your initial requirements. You got to wait till you go through the testing, and even sometimes it's out of production. And then all of a sudden, the, the person's like, "Oh, I forgot something." Well, the use of Corticon helps kind of prevent that by showing you some things up earlier. So mm -hmm. that's just one of the reasons why. I think another interesting thing on this slide for the open edge developers is that there is your own rule vocabulary. And obviously a lot of our open edge uh, customers and partners have developed very specific applications for niche verticals or things like that. What we're saying is, is that they could actually build, you know, here in this example we show underwriting and we have age and name and risk rating. Let's say this was a, 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 a billing application or this was something for healthcare or something for um, ERP or payroll, would the open edge developers be able to build their own vocabulary into this? You can. With, with some of the things we've done in the more recent version of open edge, you have greater integration that allows you to import those vocabularies directly in. So it's totally seamless to those users. Excellent. And the one thing before we go, that, that last key point is very key. As easy as this thing as it looks in terms of Corticon, we have seen it be utilized in some of the most sophisticated business rule applications out there. If you've ever been to our website, you may have seen that one of the, our users is eBay, and they have over 140 million transactions per day are hitting our Corticon to actually go through and validate and make sure that the person. Um, and it's really more for the use of whether or not escrow has to be um, done with purchases but we actually have a really good um, group of individuals that are utilizing this, 
and it goes everything from the healthcare system, financial services, eBay, retail, health, just like a healthcare system, they're all utilizing that right now. And so with the eBay uh, example, I think what you're showing, maybe the open edge customers who might be sitting there going, but what about performance? Obviously, if I hard coded in my ABL, uh, you know, I know that it's compiled and I know that it's, or I already understand what my performance implications might be. When you're talking about calling real time a rules engine, some people might think, oh, but what about performance? But it's basically, I mean, I love to use the eBay for the perfect reason. The performance, first of all, maintains. We'll talk about it in, a, in a, another slide about the way, because we have a patented way of how we do our calculations, that it actually, um, we always stay linear, linear. But eBay is, eBay is a great example of the expansion of the product. When we first started with eBay, we figured that they were probably going to have around 50 million rules, or 50 million times they were going to have transactions going through Corticon. As eBay has grown, they've actually utilized Corticon even more, and we've actually tripled that, the exact same application. That shows the ability for Corticon to scale as you grow as a business as well, which is very key. So this is just, I'm going to kind of walk you through this, but it's just like as simple, going back to the, everything is based on a decision. And as simple as it may sound is, I need to, for example, prescribe a drug for Colleen. The thing is, is that one question or one statement had a lot of implications associated with it. Is this the first? Is this the best treatment for her? For those of you who are with a healthcare provider, is it on the formulary? If not, what could be the replacement or the generic version I have to utilize? For does the patient meet the criteria? For example, I would not give Colleen a drug for prostate. So therefore, it has to. Go, you have to basically verify that patient um, drug allergy indication, is Colleen currently on a drug right now that's contraindicated for the new prescription? You know, and then what should be the dosage for Colleen? So even though we started off with something as simple as saying, I got to prescribe a drug for Colleen, there are so many decisions and rules that need to be put in place to make sure that you are actually getting the best one for her at the end. And so what we have is all that, if you take that graphical thing, on the graph I just showed you, and now look at this table. This is how we actually put this into place. Colleen mentioned a little bit earlier, if you look to the far left, these are all the different um, vocabularies that you can use, you can, or you can import whether or not you can create from new or you can actually import from others, but you put all those things there. The way the rule statement actually, if you go to the right-hand side of the table look, what you see there is these are some of the things that are indicated, the age, for example, this was a good one. It has pregnancy. You know, you look at whether a person's pregnant or you know, pregnancy is safe. All of those things are there. And then one thing out, if you please look at the bottom underneath the rules statement, look at how it's written. It's very much plain English. You know, there's not a lot of coding or whatever else, but it's just really your age is calculated from the date of birth. And so it's the simplicity that was put into the design for this for the Corticon allows you to not only utilize it as a developer, but to be confident that you can provide, move it over to someone on the business side who's probably working with these numbers a lot more and know that they are going to be able to input this very seamlessly themselves. Mm -hmm. So I just pushed this in there for, um, because we are a recognized market leader. Forrester has gone through and talked about how we consider our um, the Corticon was a breakthrough tool for the business analyst. Kind of going back to what we just mentioned, because of the very intuitive graphical that business analysts are able to very quickly adopt to this and utilize it. So they, they, they stated that. And then when Gardner was actually going through doing uh, magic quadrants for us, we were listed in the leader section of that. And so those are very key that it's not just us saying it, it's not just the, our customers who have provided us some great testimonials that you'll find on our website, but when we go to those independent analysts, they too have been able to see the why Corticon is such a great thing. So, Colleen, you were mentioning a little bit earlier, we were talking about the performance and yeah. how that performance is this. And this is what this um, slide really is to indicate. You know, there are other um, products that are out there. We're not going to go into detail about the names of them per se, but you can just think they are all based on what they call the Reedy algorithm system. And this is which is which really works very well. You can basically continue to provide you know, and it scales. You give it more.
more um, rule, it's able to go. The problem with the reading and what this graph is to show is that, however, when you start giving them more complex things, then it starts to degrade exponentially. And if you think about some of the applications that you may be putting on, um, basically may be producing, where you have these very complex, with some of these other um, algorithms, what you actually have to do is pretty much pull, stop, go back, and then actually sequentially order. This is the methodology that it should basically go through. And it takes a lot of productivity away from what you've done with your rule engine. On the flip side, We've actually patented our algorithm, DT, for short for design time. And the key thing is it doesn't matter how much more stuff you're throwing it. You can increase the number of rules. You can increase the complexity of the data there. We stay linear. We break right through that RET wall and continue to provide you what you expect in terms of the engine performance. So this is really why uh, we always talk about the fact that the more complex the rule, the better situation for Corticon. And it, it really comes down to there are many rules engines out there, um, but some are designed for more of that very simple if this, then that. Uh, what we're talking about, especially when you look at the application development area like uh, the Open Edge application developers, you know, sometimes these are not very simple rules. Sometimes they are, and maybe those are the ones that are, you know, just keep it in the ABL. Mm -hmm. It's when you really start to get that complexity or you need the agility to change them more frequently that the rules engine really starts to come into play then. Oh, exactly. And I think that one of the key things, especially reason for you guys to come back to part two of the webinar, is that we'll talk directly. When should you, when should you code an ABL or when should you actually utilize Corticon? And that will be a really good one for you. Yeah, and I think that was one of the questions I know we get asked a lot is, you know, are you saying that I wouldn't use my ABL anymore? And absolutely not. We're not saying that. What we're saying is there's times when maybe there's a better tool, and it's when there are those complex rules or the rules that are changing constantly. I know one of our uh, partners that is actually doing payroll specifically looked at this because of the number of payroll changes and the regulatory requirements for that accuracy. That's when you want it, you need to be audited or potentially you need better visibility into why a decision was made. And that's another area that Corticon really, having a rules engine with audit, traceability, those are really different than going back and looking at your code. Right, exactly. I know that we've, um, I was just on a call in the last two weeks where it was just for that audit trail. We were being, so one of our partners was being asked to show how did they come up with a decision to ensure that they actually kept the law. They were able to go into their Corticon and say, this is how our decision tables are made, and then they were, and then pass it over. They were like, good, we're good to go from there. So it makes your life a lot easier. Yeah. Now, this one, hopefully within WebEx, is going to build correctly. But go ahead, as we can kind of move. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of times, most of the errors that we have found when it comes to rules are introduced in the requirement phase. Now, remember, with the requirement phase, it's just what you get from the analyst. Unfortunately, both errors are not detected until a little bit further down as you're either doing the unit testing or the acceptance testing. So think of the time that's basically been spent. Now, if there have been cases where it, where you, it doesn't find out until you're in the production and it's actually out there in the market, and then guess what? Now you have customer satisfaction issues. Let's go back. If you did find them in the unit testing or assessment testing phase, well, what happens? You still then have to kind of go back, relook at your requirements, redo the design, coding. Just think of all the cycles that are basically spent trying to get that done. The key element about utilizing Corticon is because of the design time nature where we actually put all of the stuff in early, we find the errors earlier. Like I mentioned where you have the example with 29 million things that we had not even thought about, they're found earlier, which allows you to kind of go ahead and move forward very easily. And with that, I mean, I'm, I'm going to show you this exact example, but it's very key that when you utilize open, Corticon for Open Edge, what we're doing is you're and eliminating the inconsistency and definitely increase, increasing the productivity, allowing the developers to develop, allowing the business analysts who are closer to the knowledge to make whatever changes that they make. And 
by doing that, we've seen 10x decrease in the uh, uh, decrease in the business uh, development of business logic, as well as 25x in terms of the maintenance cycle. So those numbers come in particular from one really great um, customer case study of ours, and it's from the um, NCAA. So that's the National Collegiate Athletic Association, which um, runs a lot of the college sports here in the United States. One of the key elements they have now is really about eligibility, whether or not a student actually is academically eligible enough to play a particular sport. Beforehand, if you look at the left-hand side under first generation, this is what they were actually doing. Between the analysis, the preparation, the design, spending 225 hours simply just to actually do the initial development for their theirs, and they were actually hard coding at the time. When they moved over to a rules engine, they dropped it down to 22 hours or a 10x improvement, which is just wonderful. Now, the other key element is just similarly because of all the changes that occurred. So, for the, for example, in this particular case, we were talking about academic eligibility. Let's say that the NCAA decided to change its um, grade point average from a 2.8 down to a 2.6. Well, think about how quick it is now to utilize the rules engine to change that. They're able to do it in two hours. When they were going back and doing it from a coding perspective, it was 50 hours. So this is a great example of where you've actually been able to see that. So at this point, I want to turn it back over to Colleen. I think you can give a little bit more in, um, detail about how Open Edge and the rules have been utilized. Great. So, you know, as we've been talking about, and actually I saw one of the questions come in asking about, uh, you know, does Corticon work with 10.1c? Um, the integration with the Corticon rules server started actually with 10.2b. And that's because of the web, uh, it was using web services to integrate. So, um, I, you know, I, I gotta, I'm gonna have to double check on the 10.1c because I don't know if we had the web services integration capability. It might require you to uh, at least update to 10.2b, which is where the first testing we did with the integration of Corticon and Open Edge. Now, while that integration started with 10.2, you know, one of the things that I want to make sure you realize is, is we've continued. Uh, obviously, 10.2 came out uh, a number of years ago. It was last year, actually, in 2013, that we did some native integration with Corticon with the Open Edge 11 base, and that was 11.3. Um, with our most recent product, that we rolled out in August, 11.4, that's really where we've not only did we tighten the integration up on the open edge side, but also based upon the most current release of Corticon, which is 5.4, we really made sure that the integration was, um, you know, quite tight, and this is really where uh, the seamless integration and why we're now talking about the capability of open edge and rules and Corticon rules for open edge. Um, the two products now have been uh, built so that, for example, you can import temp table and data sheets for that vocabulary creation that we talked about earlier, the way in which you would create that vocabulary if it already exists within your open edge environment to be able to import those data sheets directly into uh, the Corticon rules server. We also, now the ABL library actually handles and removes some of that SOAP complexity that was required for the web services-based integration with the Open Edge 10.2 uh, implementation. And so what we've tried to do is simplify that and make it so that we can mask that so, uh, with so you don't really have to understand the complexity of soap. Um, one of the other questions I saw that has come in asked about REST, and yes, um, with the most current implementation and integration, REST and JSON uh, absolutely uh, can be used for the execution of the decision services. So we now support that RESTful uh, services. And also the ABL is quite knowledgeable 
about Corticon. And so really somebody who's familiar with the open edge ABL environment uh, can in fact be, um, you know, can use the, the tools that they're used to and still make calls out to the Corticon rules engine. Um, you know, one of the other things to keep in mind, obviously, is this was with uh, the most current releases, but uh, in the roadmap and as we continue forward, that integration uh, will continue to foster and we will continue to enhance that integration. The other tool that uh, Corticon does integrate with is the Open Edge uh, Business Process Management capability. You know, lots of times when you look at a BPM environment, uh, Rules Engine is one of the key components of that, uh, it, of that tool set. And so one of the things we wanted to make sure was if you developed a process model uh, and defined what the process is within those processes, if then uh, rules were required, the integration happens at that business process server and the Corticon server. And so, um, you know, one of the things that's critical is that we have made sure that these tools now integrate so anybody who's looking to really, as they look to do next generation development and want to take advantage of the BPM uh, the business process modeler and the process server, when they're actually executing those business processes, the rules engine actually can come into play as well. And so there's tight integration completely not only with the Open Edge business language, but also with the Open Edge business process server. And, um, and for those of you that aren't familiar with Open Edge BPM, again, this was delivered as part of Open Edge 11.3 last year in uh, late 2013 that was delivered and um, and uh, obviously as I just mentioned we now are on 11.4 where those capabilities have continued to be enhanced as well so just something to keep in mind we do have some existing uh, customers around um, you know uh, that are, are kind of taking a look now and stepping back and saying, as I look to need to develop new automation or I want to take something that exists in my core Open Edge application and really kind of bring it to that next level with workflows and events and rules, you know, the combination of the Corticon rules for Open Edge and BPM and the core Open Edge platform really becomes a very powerful platform for the development of those next generation applications. And as I mentioned, part three of the webinar will really focus on looking at using some of these tools as part of your modernization strategy. And uh, I know a couple of weeks ago at Exchange, one of the Open Edge customers that was mentioned on the main stage was Macintosh Retail in uh, Belgium. And this is exactly what they've done is used both the BPM engine and Corticon to really automate a lot of the processes as they're looking to develop next generation capabilities in their back end warehouse management and ERP application that's based on Open Edge. And so we really, uh, as I said, in part three, that's when we'll talk about a lot more about examples what people have done and how they've been able to do that. Um, you know, Kevin mentioned before, visit the website. There are so many different types of case studies, videos, white papers, and documentation. You know, what we said was today was really a what is Corticon rules for open edge, why it rules. So, yes, it, it, I don't want you to think it was a sales presentation, but it definitely was an overview presentation, uh, really to give you the high-level information. But I know your open edge, uh, I know our customers and our open edge partners uh, pretty well, and, and I know it requires you to really learn a lot more um, in, in terms of, uh, you know, what are the, what are some ways people have done it? And so that's why we want you to take the time before the next webinar, which is in a couple of weeks, you know, take a look at some of these uh, case studies and videos and read the white papers. Uh, I think it really will get you thinking about maybe where rules could be used within your application. And so take a look at the website. There's a lot of great information there 
Um, and obviously, there's also an opportunity to download some eval software if you want to just kind of get uh, get a look at it. For those of you that have PSDN uh, subscriptions, actually, Corticon uh, Development Server is part of your uh, PSDN subscription. And uh, as we said, there's all, also a, a free uh, eval to take a look at, play around with it, and uh, and start to get yourself familiar uh, with the Corticon server. Um, I want to just, before we open it up for questions, I've answered some, but I see there's still some others. Um, the, the, uh, the next part two, if you will, in the series is going to be a little more on the technical side. And, and uh, as I already mentioned, we'll have some of our uh, ABL gurus kind of talk about traditional coding when you would use the ABL and when you might want to look at Corticon modeling and, and what some of those differences are. And I think this is something that a lot of people have questions on. And so um, we'll, we'll really explore which ones uh, you need to look at and when you might want to look at which one. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to AJ. I do. I know I answered some of the questions AJ, but it looks like uh, there are a few more that I can answer there as well. There certainly are. Um, I had a couple just uh, briefly uh, come in. Um, I think you might have answered this one, but I just wanted to reiterate for everybody on the line uh, about the license policy related to Corticon. If a user is on OpenEdge 10.1c, how can they integrate with Corticon? Yeah, so that's why, as I said, I'm not sure about 10.1 because I can't remember whether 10.1 had web services capability built into it. I, in back of my mind, I'm thinking it didn't come out till 10.2, but um, I guess I'll make the statement it requires web services integration, and if you can do web services integration, then absolutely you can use the Corticon Business Process Server, I mean, uh, Corticon Business Rule Server um, with OpenEdge in that. Uh, version, obviously, I'd like to make the push for them to move up to 11, but not everybody can do that right now. But absolutely, if you can handle and support web services capability in your Open Edge app, then you can use Cortica. Um, another question come in. Is it just an English-based uh, rules engine? Uh, should our users or should users understand English to be able to use it? I, this is, yeah, I can answer that. Yes, primarily it is English. We have localized it for the Japanese market, starting with 5.3. So if you're in the Japanese market, you do have access to it, and you can utilize it. It's localized for you. But for them, everywhere else, it's just English-based. Okay, great. Uh, we had someone chat in. They like what Colleen said about why an organization may need a separate rules engine. Um, they'd like you to repeat that, the reason being they – are on a call are on calls with a lot of the decision makers, and they say they already have rules engines built into their existing platforms. Uh, if you can emphasize uh, what you s would suggest saying to overcome something like that, or just discuss that further with a uh, decision maker. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So you know, um, it, there are a lot of rules engines out there, and I think. Um, you know, many times the rules engines actually, some of the early ones were more built into the, a full-blown BPM environment. So separating rules from the BPM engine, um, you know, is one thing. I think Kevin also talked about the fact that, you know, many of them are based upon this Ricci algorithm. And what happens is, is at one point they hit a certain wall. And it really comes down to the complexity and the linearity of, uh, you know, of the rules and the, the complexity of the rules. And so, you know, there is definitely, if you, if the, uh, whoever is asking that, you know, if these decision makers, you know, if you need our help to differentiate the Corticon rules engine versus um, some of these other rules engines that are on the market, we absolutely have competitive information and materials that we could provide to you. Uh, just as you see the emails there, send an email to Kevin or to myself, and we'll get you copies of some of those differentiating and some of those battle cards that we call it about, you know, the Corticon rules engine. But that's getting into a this versus that. I think my other statement that I would make is if somebody has built their own rules engine, typically, 
you know, that requires some expertise and maintenance now. And, and most people who are application developers, rules engines and workflow engines isn't in your core competency. And so one of the things we could look at is, is there a way to slowly wean off of a, a homegrown rules engine and move more to a kind of market leading, as we talked about, you know, when, uh, when the industry analysts look at our capabilities, um, they see that w this is what our core competency is. We have a, a very highly skilled development team here that just focuses on the rules engine. And then the third point I would make to that is that tight integration with Open Edge. So anybody who's an Open Edge application developer, um, there's not going to be any other rules engine on the market that is so tightly integrated with the ABL as well as uh, with just the overall Open Edge Progress Developer Studio and the way in which those products really now are, are integrated. So those would be the comments I guess I'd make. Obviously, if you've got specific questions, we absolutely um, could uh, do that on a separate call as well. Excellent. Uh, where's the Corticon online documentation? Where can that be found? So if you go to um, progress.com backslash Corticon, under resources, there is a tab that says documentation. You click on there and it provides you that. For those who are basically utilizing our communities, you can also find it on the Progress community page as well. Great. Uh, i got time for a couple more questions here. Can you discuss briefly Corticon access from non-ABL applications? Yeah, well, absolutely. So I think we've already, we've also, um, well, we focus today a lot on that integration with Open Edge, but one of the things to keep in mind is that Corticon also is a standalone product. So, and, you know, I saw one of the questions asked about kind of the, the licensing and everything, and I think this is, so there is Corticon standalone, and Corticon works very well with SQL Server as well as with Java, and I think this is something to keep in mind that the .NET world and Java world outside of the Open Edge world Corticon absolutely integrates and supports in those development environments. So many of our customers, while they might have Open Edge applications, they also have .NET applications or Java-based applications, or some of our Corticon standalone customers only have .NET or Java. And one of the nice things is, is the product actually works with both of those, another competitive differentiator. Many times rules engines are either built for .NET or they're built for Java. Uh, this particular rules engine, which is part of the reason why Progress acquired it, was built in that open platform that said it could work with Open Edge, it could work with SQL, it could work with Java, it could work with anything. And so that's something to keep in mind. What we've done for our Open Edge customers is we've added Corticon rules for Open Edge to the Open Edge price list. And one of the things that we had gotten uh, feedback and concern about was the initial kind of standalone Corticon core-based pricing was very expensive and not necessarily in line with our open edge pricing. So what we've done is harmonize that pricing. We now have a per user, uh, you know, $450 per user kind of price for Corticon. And we also now for our application partners, depending upon how they're deploying it, we could look at Corticon on an SPLA, on a POA. So we have a lot more flexibility with the licensing of the uh, progress Corticon for open edge uh, capability. While still on the market today, we also have the, um, the standalone pricing for Corticon in the non-open edge world. And so I, I would recommend that anybody who is interested in, and maybe had some concerns or is unfamiliar with the harmonized pricing and the pricing flexibility and options we have now, that they speak to their rep about that because that's something that we've done within the last year and I think it's important to note. Great. Um, question around development skills and in-depth technical skills. Does Cordicon, uh, how in-depth of a skill set does Cordicon require for it to still be useful to a potential user? So I'm reading that. So from a, um, if you're a business analyst perspective, Cordicon was designed specifically for you to be able to utilize those rules. Because as you saw earlier, it's very much simply an Excel spreadsheet that allows you to actually model as necessary. 
you would have to work in concert with the developer IT side to make sure that it's implemented correctly on the back end. But in terms of just simply maintaining and changing those rules, as a, a, a business analyst would be able to have those skills. Okay, great. Um, last question, I, I think I can take this, is uh, from Gwen. Um, she mentioned uh, that we said at the beginning there will be some other webinars, a part two and a part three in the series, um, questions about being able to sign up for those. Uh, Gwen, just uh, as an FYI, there will be emails uh, upcoming. Um, we'll have our second session in mid-November, our third session in mid-December, so I would say keep an eye out for the emails. Uh, we'll also continue with the, the video invites, which will be promoted out through our social media channels. So, Gwen, I'd encourage you and actually everybody on the call, uh, if you're not following us on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn, to, to go ahead um, and um, you know, link up, and uh, we'll, we'll be sending the, that information out in the upcoming weeks or so. Um, so thank you very much. Uh, I think that is about all the time we have for questions. Colleen or Kevin, any closing uh, notes or, or statements from you guys? Yeah, well, um, I, I, you know, I, I was just looking at some of the comments about uh, I, I'm, I'm very excited to see that people are interested in Part 2 and Part 3. Um, if this is something that you want more in-depth, obviously reach out to your account manager or to Kevin or myself. And, uh, you know, we absolutely could provide a, a demo for you. We could get that scheduled and we can get access, get you access to whatever you need uh, to help you in your process. Um, I'm excited about the Corticon and Open Edge integration, and uh, we made this a three-part series. Uh, because we think that there's a lot of great information, but it doesn't stop after that. Obviously, reach out to your account managers or always reach out to myself or Kevin, and we'll get the right people involved uh, to help you out. So thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for joining the webinar today. As stated, stay tuned um, for future invites as part of our three-part series. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at future webinars with us. Thank you very much, everybody. Have a great day.